Welcome to the Edge You Magic New Educator Podcast, the go-to show for supporting new educators navigating the exciting journey from campus to the classroom. Join your host, Dr. Sam Fesich, for a blend of inspiration, advice, and practical strategies, one cup of coffee at a time. I'm Josh Swartz. And I'm William Millingworth. Hosts of the High Tech Podcast, a part of the Education Podcast Network, just like the show you're listening to now. Shows on the network are individually owned, and opinions expressed may not reflect others. Find other interesting education podcasts at edupodcastnetwork.com. Hello, Edu Magicians, and welcome back to another episode of the Edu Magic New Educator Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Sam Fessich. Today, we are diving into three lesson planning tools that can help support you in Danielson's framework, Domain One Planning and Prep. So, without further ado, let's get started. So, across all these different lesson planning tools, I'm going to be pulling the same standard. And it's uh, using the PDSAS site, the Pennsylvania Department of Education Standards Aligned System. I'm going to be pulling a third grade math standard, which is represent and solve problems involving multiplication and division. And then it goes into different types of examples. So I'm going to pull that example, pull that standard. I'm going to use that across all three AI tools for lesson planning. The first AI tool that I'm going to use is lessonplans.ai. Once you create a free account, you can go to the grade level. I'm going to choose third grade subject, and it has a drop down list including art, career and technical, science, reading, phys ed, language arts, learning through play, special education. And then it asks for a lesson title. And I'm going to paste in my um, my standard and lesson description. So I'm going to go ahead and pull in um, one of the assessment anchors that's associated with that topic. And then I'm going to click generate. And what it's going to do, it's going to generate an example lesson plan based on that topic, title, and description. So looking through our example here that is pulling up on the right-hand side in the workspace, I have topic, represent and solve problems involving multiplication and division objectives and outcomes, interpret and describe products of whole numbers up to 10 by 10, interpret and describe quotients of whole numbers up to and including 10 divided by 10, solve problems involving multiplication and division. So for those outcomes and objectives, I'm gonna wanna make sure that I have those specified, make them a SMART objective, where I have the behavior, the criterion, to what standard do I want them to achieve that, then we have our materials, whiteboard and markers. We have a warm up, direct instruction, guided practice, independent practice, closure, and assessment. So, here in our warm up, begin by asking students to share with a partner example of a product that they can think of and write these on the whiteboard. Then, ask students to share with a partner, an ex- share with a partner example of a quotient and share those on the whiteboard. Ask the students to share the partner, share with a partner the context in which they could use each of the product and the quotient in their daily lives. So that warm up, I'm going to want to spice that up a little bit, make that more for my students. Direct instruction, introduce the concept of multiplication as repeated addition and concept of division as repeated subtraction. Just demonstrate how to multiply and divide whole numbers using manipulatives or technology. And then explain the rules of multiplying and dividing. Then we have our guided practice, have students work in pair, complete multiplication and division equations using manipulatives or technology as a class discuss. Independent practice, assigned project base in which students create their own multiplication division problems. So if I were to look at this assessment and this lesson plan, I'm going to want to really add my own voice, edit, add stuff that I'm going to put in there, um, really make it my own. Um, I do like that it has a nice outline that I can follow and that there's assessment procedures at the end. What I can do is I can copy this text. First, I can uh, download the PDF and rate the result. I can then copy that content and copy it to my clipboard or download it as a PDF. And then it saves in my uh, lesson documents. And I can see all of my lessons that I've developed um, using Lesson Plan AI. So it'll show me um, all the different lesson plans. I can also favorite them. 
So this lesson plan, it needs some work. It needs, it's a nice outline, but I really need to jazz it up to make it my own. With Lesson Plans AI, you would pay, um, subscribe for $49 a year, um, $19 for your first year. So there's a paid, a paid account. You can click on documents to see all of your lesson plans. You can check out your account, add your, add your information, um, and they also have support available. So that's LessonPlans.ai. The next tool I'm gonna to check out and use this same standard is Eduade.ai. So with Eduade, once you create an account, it brings you to the Eduade.ai assistant. I'm gonna create a third grade lesson and I'm gonna click Lesson Plan Seed and I'm going to enter my topic. And my topic is the multiplication and division, interpreting and describing products of whole numbers. So I'm gonna click add to my workspace. And here lesson plan AI on the right side of my screen and my workspace is developing my lesson plan. It has objectives, how it's aligned to Bloom's taxonomy, teaching strategies, cue sets, activities, assignment ideas, encouraging real world use and closure questions. What I like about this, I have my Bloom's taxonomy alignment. I have my objectives. Students will be able to interpret and describe products of whole numbers up to and including 10 times 10 application type objectives, students be able to apply their understanding multiplication and solve word problems. I have my Bloom's taxonomy alignment, understanding and explaining the concept of multiplication and its relation to grouping. Here it has teaching strategies for direct instruction, cooperative learning and hands-on manipulatives. I would need to go ahead and describe that more and really lay that out. I have different types of sets, visual, verbal and manipulative type cue sets where it gives students objectives or manipulatives, different examples of types of visuals I can use. I have activities like grouping activities, word problem, word problem and real world scenarios. So present students with real world scenarios like baking cookies or sharing toys and ask to identify the multiplication and equation that represents in both situations. Has an assignment idea, creating a poster, for example, have students create a poster that illustrates a real world scenario where multiplication is used and explain the meaning of multiplication and equation. Word problem worksheets provide students with worksheet containing word problems, volume multiplication, have them solve it. I like the real world reflection. It says ask students to reflect on a situation in their own lives where multiplication was used. And then it has encouraging real world skills, math journals, classroom discussion, and role play. Assign students different roles and have them act out scenarios where multiplication is used in real world contest, context. And then there's closure questions. So some ways to ask students to make sure they understood what was going on. Can you create your own multiplication word problem? How does understanding multiplication help solve problems in the real world? So that's just one of the things that eduade.ai can do is create lesson plans. They can also create unit plans, classroom announcements, a substitute planner, evidence statement, syllabus starter. You know I'm going to be using that in the fall. Direct instruction script, email home. Um, they also have templates where you can organize your thoughts to do a specific task, create a list, create a data, data table, credible source list, an anchor chart, a rubric. Love that it's all built right here. One of my favorites, SEL and mindful activities, team building activities, icebreakers. Yes, first day of school, I'll be looking at that. Inclusion activities or inclusion pieces, IEP outline, accommodation list, evidence-based intervention list, behavioral intervention plan. So if I keep my idea with my third grade students and interpreting and describing products of whole numbers, that's standard. And I'm gonna click accommodation list and click add to workspace. Down below under my lesson plan, it provides accommodations for third grade students uh, for this example. So we have visual aids and manipulatives, providing concrete example, multi-sensory learning opportunities, peer collaboration and group work, individualized instruction, differentiated worksheets, regular practice and reinforcement. So these are fantastic ways that I could then use these ideas as a jumping off piece to work on my accommodations for this specific lesson plan. So that is all under eduade.ai slash, or under their eduade.ai assistant tab. They have a lot more to offer. Since this specific episode is all about, <laughs> this specific episode is all about planning and prep, I'd recommend checking out the lesson seed, the unit plan, the direct instruction script, and you can just keep adding these pieces to your already created document. 
um, and you can give it a little title. So if I type in third grade lesson and click save, I can now have access to this because it goes under my saved content. So if I click direct instruction script, third grade using that same standard, it gives me a whole script to work through. It talks about what I'm gonna say, my check-in questions, my conclusion, key takeaways, all sorts of things. If I click on substitute planner, it gives me a description of um, all sorts of things that I can use for my sub as a substitute teacher. So it gives a substitute teacher plan, classroom rules. It gives them best practices for handling students. It gives them a schedule of the day, positive message, um, assignment ideas, all related to that specific content. Maybe I want to create an announcement in my Google Classroom. So I'm going to click class announcement based on that based on that standard. Now I have my class announcement. Attention third grade students. Are you ready to learn about interpreting and describing products of whole numbers? In this exciting topic, you'll discover how to interpret numbers like 35 as the total of number of objects and groups. For example, if you have five groups with each group containing seven objects, can you guess how many objects there are? It's 35. We'll also explore describing context where total number of objects can be expressed. Can you think of a situation where you might need to express number of objects in this way? Maybe a five rows of chairs that has, and each row has seven chairs. By learning how to interpret and describe products of whole numbers, you'll become a master of understanding quantities and their relationships. Love that announcement, so fun. Okay, so that's just a few other things that they have for planning and prep. We're gonna come back to EduAid uh, whenever we explore more tools for teaching and learning, engaging students in learning. But let me just give you a little sneak peek as to what we're gonna look at. Um, so they have also under uh, professional duties, evidence statement, and it includes content that you can find related to Bloom's taxonomy and it'll relate Bloom's taxonomy to that specific standard that you're looking at. Content creator is another tab under EduAid and you can have a lab material list, team, team building activities, a mock study, project-based learning, reading comprehension, where you can generate informative text about a scientific topic with reading comprehension questions. You can create a model that illustrates a scientific concept, an essay outline, a debate, multiple choice question, discussion prompts, vocabulary word problems, taxonomy squat scaffolding, true and false question, extension activities, reflection questions, and matching questions. You can also have it generate a list or a demonstration or create a game. So I'm gonna go back to my math third grade, keep my topic in there, interpret, interpret products of whole numbers and click game and have it add to my workspace. Let's see what it comes up with. Here we go, it came up with a game called the whole number product challenge and materials needed, game setup, game rules and directions. There's also an option for engagement activities that I can add into my workspace as well, keeping that same uh, third grade math and my standard, I have my engagement activity. So it has a brain teaser, start with a riddle. I love this brain anticipatory set. I am tall when I'm young, I'm short when I'm old. What am I? Quick movement break, lead students through a short activity, such as stretching or jumping, jumping jacks or a quick dance party. Mystery box, word association game. So just some different ways to get students' attention. Would you rather games related to our standard? Would you rather have three groups, three groups of four cookies or four groups of three cookies? Why? Would you rather have two bags with six candies each or three bags with four candies each? Why? Have them think about those. I think that's really cool. All right. Also under EduAid, they have their chat, which provides support. We have feedback, which can include, you can go ahead and put students' work into here and it'll generate feedback. Um, feedback, and it's important to know that EduAid does not store your students' work or the feedback that they generate. Um, you know, remove any identifying information. So you can pop in students' feedback and you can ask EduAid to give you feedback on um, grammar and spelling, logic and reasoning, uh, mechanics of writing or provide custom feedback with your own rubric where you can pop in your own rubric there. There's also a community available um, to help support educators. So that's eduaid.ai. It has so much to offer. But in the 
words of Lamar from Reading Rainbow. You don't have to take my word for it. I have Thomas and Thomas here, to the co-founders and creators of EduAid, here are going to share a little bit about EduAid.ai with you. As a teacher of five years, even in that short time, I have seen a variety of technology adoptions with just as broad a range of mixed results. New technologies come, and often we're not asking the right questions. Like if we strip away all the technology, what is it that we're trying to accomplish? And how may a certain technology amplify our capabilities such that we may succeed in that pursuit? With Eduate AI, we built a platform for AI-assisted lesson development in response to points of friction that my co-founders and I have witnessed in working in education, like the challenges the new educator faces, the barriers to access to high-quality instructional resources, or the lack of time to adequately personalize and differentiate instruction to meet the needs of diverse learners. We believe that large language models may be the right technology to help address these areas of concern. AI will be used to automate tasks. Generative texts and resources will become increasingly common as natural language models and diffusion models improve and become more directly accessible to the general public. Trained on massive amounts of data, these systems will redefine the way many of us approach daily tasks. But more than automation, there are interesting opportunities for collaboration. And that is the principle upon which Eduade AI was founded. While large language models are excellent tools for compressing massive amounts of data into readable summaries or generating multiple choice questions or developing lesson seeds and unit plans, the model does not have an understanding of your classroom in the way that you do. It cannot make intuitive shifts to meet the unique needs of the students in front of you. That is only a job that you as an expert teacher can perform. You bring a common sense, the outcome of your contextualizing and relating new experiences with your past memories. You, as the teacher, are really what makes Eduade work, because Eduade is only a tool to help you amplify the methods and techniques you employ to reach your students. I don't know about you, but I loved how Thomas shared about how EduAid's not here to replace you as a teacher. You bring that critical thinking, that emotional learning, the SEL, the knowledge of your students' strengths, areas of need and interest into play here. This is just a tool to help support you. All right. So our last um, lesson plan generator that we're going to check out is with magicschool.ai. Now with magicschool.ai, once you create your free account, it's going to bring you to all of their magic tools and it's going to have a default selection of all. But you'll see there's different categories, planning, student support, communication, productivity, and community tools. Today, domain one, we're focusing on planning and prep. So when I click on planning, we have diagnostic assessment generator, lesson plan generator, rubric generator, unit plan generator, vocab based text generator, make it relevant where you can generate ideas that make what you're teaching relevant to your class, math, story word problems, informational text generator where you can choose between literacy and nonfiction, and then uh, customize the topic of your choice. Common misconception generator where you can give it a topic and you're teaching and get strategies to address it with your students. Multiple choice quiz generator, vocab list, topic based generator, text level, text leveler tool where you can um, take, take any text and adapt it for any grade level to fit your students reading level and skills. Text analysis assignment generator, multiple explanations for complex concepts, assignment scaffolder, scaffolder, clear directions, text scaffolder tool, vocabulary list that's text-based, exemplar and non-exemplar assignments, a text-dependent questions, and a reading quiz generator. Whew, that was a lot. Today, we're going to check out their lesson plan generator. So let's go ahead and click on it. You can go ahead and select your grade level, type in the topic that you're teaching. So we're going to stick with our interpreting um, and describing products. Um, and I'm going to 
you can type in what you're teaching and adding in additional content. So what I did under what you're teaching, I typed in the title of the standard and additional context, I put in one of the anchor assessment pieces. So here in my lesson plan generators, give me my objective, my assessment, my key points, opening, introduction, new material, guided practice, independent practice, closing, extension, homework, and a common core standards address. I like that piece. All right, so once I have my, my lesson plan, I can copy it to the, to the clipboard and I can pop it into a Word doc or wherever I'm putting my stuff in. So let's go ahead and check this one out. Assessment, students will be given word problems that involve multiplication and division will be asked to represent and solve using drawings or equations. Key points, understand the concept of multiplication as repeated addition, use drawings and equations to represent and solve multiplication and division problems. Opening, show students a picture of a group of objects and ask how they can find the total number of objects in the group. Discuss different strategies. Okay, that's cool. Um, introduction of new material, explain to students that multiplication is a way to find the total number of objects in a group of equal size. And then show example of multiplication and division problems. Guided practice, provide students with a set of word problems that involve multiplication and division. Monitor students' performance, walk around the classroom, provide feedback as needed. Independent practice, assign students a worksheet that includes a variety of multiplication and division word problems. Uh, closing, have students share their answers, summarize key points. Extension, provide students additional word problems that require higher level thinking. Okay, so this is a nice outline. I like how it includes common, common core. It has some examples of homework. It walks me through my lesson plan. It gives me some key points, but I'm going to want to add to this. So back over on Magic Tools, when I click on planning, I'm going to go to math word problems. I'm going to click third grade. How many questions? Three sounds good. And I'm going to put in my assessment, what I'm, what I'm assessing for. So multiplication and um, division problems, 10 by 10. And story topic, so what are my students interested in? They are interested in Mario Brothers. And I'm gonna click generate. Let's see what it comes up with. Mario and Luigi are competing at a Goomba stomping contest. Mario can stomp four Goombas in a row before needing a break. Luigi can stomp two Goombas in a row. If they start stomping at the same time, how many Goombas will they have stomped all together after five rounds? I don't know about you, but that sounded like a train leaving from here and a train leaving from there. When are they going to meet? But we can break this apart. And it gives us the answer. Mario can stop four times, four times five, which is 20 Goombas. And Luigi can stop two times five, which is 10 Goombas. So 20 plus 10 is 30 Goombas altogether. Another question. Mario is collecting gold coins in the Mushroom Kingdom. And one day he collects eight coins. If he wants to collect 64 coins, how many days will it take him? It's a great division uh, problem. Bowser, the villain in the Mario Brothers game, has captured Princess Peach and locked her in the castle. Oh, what else is new? Mario needs to defeat 10 Koopa Troopas to reach the castle. If he, defeats, if he defeats two Koopa Troopas in each level, how many levels does Mario need to compete to reach the castle? To defeat 10 Koopa Troopas, Mario needs to compete 10 divided by two, which is five levels to reach the castle. That's pretty cool. I like that. My students are gonna be really interested in that. All right, so let's go ahead and go back to our planning. I can go ahead and do a multiple choice uh, generator. I'm gonna do five questions and uh, multiplication 10 by 10. We're just gonna stick with that. Generate, here we go. We have all of our questions here. What's the largest numbers that can be multiplied together in this set? Five times five, eight times eight, 10 times 10, 12 times 12. Why is it important to learn multiplication? What's the product of four times three? And then it has um, a nice little answer key there. So I might wanna go ahead and flesh that out a little bit. If I go to make it relevant, I'm gonna go to third grade. Multiplication, 10 times 10. What do my students like? Let's see. They uh, like the Pittsburgh Steelers. They like Mario Brothers. And that'll be that. I'm going to click continue. And now it gives me making it relevant. So I have Mario power-ups, Steeler jersey numbers, and Steeler Super Bowl rings. And it gives me little descriptions about how I can use multiplication in these examples. So cool. All right, guys, sorry about that. I had to, I was interrupted because my daughter heard me talking about Mario. So she goes, what are you doing? 
So I had to come over and show her that example of the math problem generator. And I went to kindergarten, I typed in kindergarten, um, three problems, single digit addition, and what does my student like? She likes Mario and Peach. So it came up with three questions that were a lot of fun. She did two and she said, hey, I'm done. I'm going to go over here and do this. So that was a lot of fun to be able to use that with her. All right. So a couple of other things that Magic Tools offers, offers for planning. I would definitely want to check out the rubric generator. Help us create our rubric because sometimes that can be really tough. Vocabulary-based text generator. Love the making it relevant piece. Text level text leveler tool is great for differentiation. And we're gonna come back to Magic School because in the next episode, because we're gonna explore their student support, communication, which is fantastic for domain four, because it has email family tool, email responder tool, okay, and productivity. I can't, I was getting so excited checking all these other options. Tech, uh, productivity, which is a text rewriter tool, a summarizer tool, a proofreader, and community building tools. So icebreakers, a colleague song generator. Oh, that might be fun. So there's a lot that Magic School offers. So go ahead, check it out. There's a lot here for you to use and to save you some teacher time. Remember friends, AI is here to support you as an educator, not replace you. Only you know the student's strengths, areas of need, interests. And these are great tools to help us get our creativity going and thinking about how we can implement and support our students, implement lessons and support our students. All right, friends, I hope this was a fun episode. Just to recap, we reviewed lessonplans.ai, eduade.ai, and magicschool.ai as tools to help us when developing and planning out our lessons. Hope it saves you some teacher time. What I would love to hear from you is let's continue this conversation over on threads. Yep, that's right. I'm on threads and I'd be really excited to connect with you. So what tool are you going to try out? How are you going to use it? What are you excited about? How is this going to help you as an educator? I'd love to hear you over on threads and connect with you over there. All right. I'll see you later, friends. And remember, you have the edgy magic within you. Bye for now. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the EduMagic New Educator Podcast. If you found it helpful, please leave a rating and review or share it with a friend. Always remember, you have the EduMagic in you.